Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Asylum. We are live on a Friday evening, which means it's time for us to talk about coping with life, basically how to live on less. And uh, as I was saying at lunchtime today when we did the broadcast, it's really important for us to know that things could get a whole lot worse before they get a whole lot better. And so anything we can do to make food go that extra step uh, is really important. And as I think you all know, uh, I have uh, been on a mission every Friday to use up my leftovers in a creative way. And so at the end of the week, I see what vegetables I've got left over. And then I try to use that incorporated in some dish that will make it work better. Uh, while we are talking, I have got some breadcrumbs in the uh, air fryer. I'm just going to stir those. because I'm going to make some, hopefully, um, some creative ideas using up the breadcrumbs. And today's subject is cauliflower. Now, you might wonder why do I want to do a cauliflower? Because it is so versatile, for one. Right? You need to know there are so many things that we can do with it, and we'll talk about those in a second. But the second thing is that it's really good value for money. And... What I'm going to do, now I live on my own, so I'm going to use it in as many ways as I can that I know I'll be able to eat this week. Hi, Anita, what a pretty name. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know you're from Saskatchewan. And how did you find us? And secondly, um, age group, 20s, 30s, 40s, old part like myself, let us know. Uh, and I'll... <laughs> I think you know I'm from southern British Columbia, uh, close to the border. So, uh, and you probably know it's I'm going to be 75 this year, so that's quite exciting. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do all sorts of things with cauliflower. And then uh, I'm also going to try making ice cream with vanilla pudding, because vanilla pudding is pretty cheap. All right, so uh, interesting. You found me via Judy's channel. All right. <laughs> and you're between 20 and 30. Great thing. So uh, are you married, single? The reason I'm asking you these questions is so that I can make sure that we talk to you in, you know, in a, a suitable way. If you know, if you <laughs> like <laughs> one of our viewers today that came on today, we know she's married with twins and they're teething. So, you know, I really try to be very patient with them. <laughs> Okay, so Jody, while I'm chit-chatting for a second, I wonder whether you could look up um, where you are in uh, New Hampshire. Um, what is the price of cauliflower? All right. And the reason is because I know what it is here in Canada or my part of Canada, but this is a pretty fairly you know, decent-sized cauliflower, and it costs me less than five bucks, which I didn't think is a bad cost considering what we're going to do with it we're going to make all sorts of different things so whether you're cooking for one person or some people uh, i'm going to do all sorts of little dishes because i cook for myself and i want some variety this week as i eat up this cauliflower makes sense but obviously if you are um, a person with a family one cauliflower would probably do you'd probably make one of these not all of them and you get to choose which one. We're going to, as I said, discuss different things about what we might do. We're also going to try and include other vegetables that I got left over this week. I've got some red pepper left over, some yellow pepper left over, not much. I've got part of a carrot, some celery. Uh, I've got some chives that have been growing on my uh, windowsill there. So I'm going to put some of that in. All right, so an organic, wow, isn't that amazing? Organic cauliflower is only $3.86 in America. You guys definitely have much better prices than we do. The bigger problems. <laughs> okay, so let's go for this. So we're saying that for under, for under five bucks, that would be true for both of us, right? 
Uh, and by the way, if you convert the Canadian five bucks, it, we probably are way more expensive, but never mind. We have other things that make it good for living here. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is fresh cauliflower has 30% more protein and many different antioxidants. I don't know if you knew that. So raw cauliflower keeps most of the antioxidants overall. But if you cook cauliflower, it increases other things. All right. Uh, try not to boil it. I know that's the way we were all taught. I was taught, you know, salt water, drop the whole thing in and let it cook, um, you know, including the leaves. Uh, I am going to suggest that you don't cook it in water. Uh, and what we're going to do is cook it other ways. All right. Now, why cauliflower, they say, and I don't know if it to be true or not, but they say it may have some cancer fighting powers. Uh, it, apparently one cup of cauliflower is an excellent source of vitamin C and K, good source of fiber, obviously, folate for those of you who might be pregnant, and vitamin B. So it has a lot of stuff. They say it protects your eyes. It aids in weight loss. Yay, 11 pounds down this year, people. Uh, <laughs> very important for me, they say it also boosts brain power. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Good to see you. And thank you for saying greetings, my people. <laughs> I, I just love that. That made my day. Thank you. Um, it aids in detoxification. So what is detoxification? It means as it travels through your body, it <laughs> sucks up the toxins and you know, helps them leave the body. Um, it improves the in digestion, all right? So all in all, it's got a lot of good things going for it. So here's our fun part for those of you who like my weekly quizzes uh, on food. How many different ways can you think of to make, to use up a cauliflower? All right, and that's the trick. How many different ways would you use it? And while you're typing that up, I'm going to cut the green part out of this one. All right, so type away there. I want to see how many different things you can come up with. I just want to get the core out of here, most of it anyway. And my next question would be, what do you do with the core of cauliflower? And as you can probably see, I don't throw mine away. What I do is I cut it up into smaller pieces like this. And then I drop it into a bag that I have in my freezer, which is full of scraps of food that I will use once a week when I make my weekly soup. All right, so now I've got green for the soup, all right? And I know that the cauliflower is going to, I won't use it all, I'll just use some of it each week. Make sense? So don't waste it. It's got good stuff in it just as it is. All right, so I'm not seeing ideas for using cauliflower, people. You're going to need to work harder than that. All right, so. All right. <laughs> really? Nobody? Or maybe the scroll didn't work. Okay, thank you, Jody. Jody's put in low carb pizza crust. We're going to do that today. And my version of it, a semi low carb for me. All right. Um, I'm definitely going to be making that. 
How many of you uh, have always wondered about cauliflower rice? I thought we'd just make it so you could see what it looks like and then we'll think about how to use it. How many of you would use cauliflower raw with a dip? Uh, and just, you know, sit and snack on it. And by the way, uh, this is my homemade yogurt cream cheese with cranberries and cinnamon. Okay. Oh, good, Jody. I'll be asking you how you make yours in a second. So how many of you want to know how to make yogurt cream cheese? I know we've discussed it before, but it's always nice to revisit it. So this is going to be on my fishery board. I'm going to have my snacks today, right? I will have my cream cheese and, um, you know, some carrots and some celery and I will be snacking on some healthy stuff. If nobody wants to, hi Iz, good to see you. Um, if anybody wants me to show how to make the yogurt cream cheese, just let me know, otherwise I will skip it. Um, right, so next thing. How many of you would use the cauliflower to make maybe cauliflower cheese? Yes, Isabel, Jody says she makes her rice, cauliflower rice, by buying it pre-riced. Very clever. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, Isabel, who is from the um, eastern side of Canada, she says, I do mine with a machine that you pull a string. Okay, I think I got one of those. Uh, but why would I use it? I thought I would use uh, Night of the Ninja. We'll do it in here. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, yeah, I'm certain it's very fast. That's why I wanted to do it in there. I'm going to do some that will keep plain, and then I'm going to flavor some up. How many of you, you know, make um, cauliflower tots out of your cauliflower florets, right? Where you bake them in the oven um, with some seasoning and stuff. Very tasty. So... You understand this is now going to go into a baggie and into the freezer ready for the next time I cook soup, which is normally on a Monday. And what I do, I've got this system. On Mondays, I'm inclined to cook um, a minestrone type soup, you know, using up some pasta. Because I've got, I put in just a little bit of pasta. Have I still got some here? Oh. I, I take about this much pasta and break it in half, and that would be two helpings of pasta. Makes sense? So that's how much pasta I allow myself, about the size of a, a quarter, but I break it in half. And that, that spaghetti is one goes in one week and the next bit goes into the next week's thing. All right, so there we go. Green for my next minestrone soup. Don't waste it. Use it. You'll be grateful. I cannot get my fridges to empty. <laughs> okay. So now then, the next thing we're going to do is you heard that I have been doing the breadcrumbs. And 
what I do is at the end of the week, you know, I think you guys know I make my own pita bread. So if I've got pita bread left over or whatever, this one I will use tomorrow. You know, I'm going to stuff it full of cheese and uh, lettuce and stuff. I keep a paper towel in there just so that it absorbs any extra moisture. So um, if I've got, you know, bread left over any sort, I then use it up at the end of the week by making breadcrumbs. And then the trick is, how am I going to use the breadcrumbs? But I probably halved my <laughs> grocery bill uh, and, and my use of food just by doing these things. And where did I learn it? I learned it from growing up at, just after the war. How many of you remember eating things like Salisbury steak, you know, which is, you know, thin piece of steak but breaded or Vienna Vien, Vien, schnitzel, you know, which is a piece of veal covered in breadcrumbs and so forth. The reason we had all those dishes is because the breadcrumbs helped the uh, meal be a little bigger. And it was also using up stale bread, which is where Melba toast came from and all those other things, all right? So here we go. Let us first of all do the fun bit. Let's make some rice. There we got some rice right there. <laughs> I'm thinking that I am going to rice about half of it because I want to make a pizza crust. And no, nah, yeah, I think I'll just make a pizza crust from it. So what I'm going to do is just get it into smaller chunks. And I'm going to rise up for all of this. It'll probably take me two goes to get it all in there. So let's do the first bit first. And you go and hire Joe. Be right back. So that was three blips, and here we have riced cauliflower. A lot of riced cauliflower. Okay, let's put the second lot in. Let's get that done as well. Be right back. And there we have it. So this is half a cauliflower. And we've made that much cauliflower rice. Now, how are we going to use it? So exciting. I thought... We would start... by putting in now obviously if you're eating totally healthily 
you won't do exactly as I'm doing. You'll do your version of this. But I'm going to put in one cup of the cauliflower and then one cup of my breadcrumbs. So it is a healthier version. Now, obviously, I, you could use uh, uh, the panko, you know, if you don't make your own breadcrumbs. That is about a cup. I'm quite surprised. Well done, Tom. Huh? All right. So now we've got the breadcrumbs and the cauliflower together. And I think we will put in an egg. And what should we put in to make it tasty? Anything that you fancy? Some pepper in, obviously, because you know I like my pepper. And it's not like you guys not to give me input on these things. All right, so let's just. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a few fried chives in there just because I have some to use up. And now I'm going to blend that all together. Hi, Autumn. How are the teething twins? <laughs> ah, interesting. Jody is saying one of the nice things is that it's a blank canvas. You can put in it whatever you like, right? So I thought I would make myself some pizza bites uh, to snack on during the week. What do you think? So we'll turn this into a pizza crust. Now, we know that the breadcrumbs were already pre-cooked, so Jody, when you make your pie crust, uh, how long do you cook it for? Because we all know that when I put it into the ninja it's going i mean into the air fry it's going to cook pretty quickly so because this is already partially cooked i'm just going to put the rest of the pizza stuff on there immediately in the meantime i'm going to put away the rest of this space because i think that is probably as much as i need this is why i have a problem emptying my freezer because as fast as I make stuff for you, I end up putting more stuff back in the freezer. Oh, 
or I will have two days where I make myself a pizza treat. All right, so I'm going to put this into the air fryer. Oh, no, I'm going to put the stuff on it first. All right. going to use that again so now all i'm going to do is make it really easy um i've got some leftover brie cheese that i'd like to use up so i'm going to put some brie cheese on there i definitely got some tomato i need to use up so let's put that on first And I've got fairly thick. I think I'm going to cut those in half. Okay, so put in some tomato pieces. Now, obviously, you can put in whatever you like on your pizza. Yeah, those of you who like different things, put it in. And I'm going to put some cheese, some brie on there. I've never made pizza with brie cheese, but today is the night. You see, it's, I've just got little bits of it left. Gourmet pizza. hate it when I do that incorrectly. All right, so now this is going in the fridge. Got the oven warming up. How long do you cook your um, cauliflower crust pizza? In a regular oven. Now, I've also got some other cheese that I want to use up, so I'm going to mix some squares, just add that in. I'm going to cook it in my um, air fryer. Yeah, I've got it at 350. I'm just warming it up at 350. I'm thinking with the air fryer, probably 10 to 15 minutes will be enough, especially as it is basically cooked. All right, Isabel saying 20 minutes for she does it and add some more cheese and add more. Okay, excellent. Hi, Beth. Uh, she said extremely hot at work today. Air went out, uh, put in a ticket to have it fixed. Ticket was parked again, meaning they are not coming to fix it. Oh, gosh. 97 degrees inside the store. Wow. And I'm struggling to get – it's about 50 outside for me, Beth. Beth, did you get any results in that you can share? 
Because I know you did a whole bank of tests. Okay, so if you guys are saying about 20 minutes, then I'm thinking probably um, do it for 10 and then maybe add a bit more cheese on top um, if, that, if it needs it. Uh, so it's a very basic, I've just got the cauliflower crust, some tomato and some cheeses on duck pepper. All right, so a very simple one. And you always hear me go black pepper because black pepper is really good for you. Okay, in it goes. So we're going to do it for 10 minutes. Oops. All right, I'm going to put it in for 10 minutes in the air fryer because we know that the air fryer does cook way faster than a conventional, even a convection oven. So we'll try it there first and then I'll see how it's doing and probably give it another five or 10 afterwards. So now then I've got all this rice left over. And isn't it amazing how much just half a cauliflower made. I'm actually quite surprised how much it made. Now, the other thing that I heard about and I have never tried was mashed cauliflower as opposed to mashed potato. All right, so let's try that with a bit more. So we're going to put in Remember that we don't want to boil it. We're going to pre-cook it, right? So let's take another one of these. And we'll take about a cup full. No. That's two cups, huh? Oh, well, I'm going to add It's healthy. All right, so I'm going to do two cups, and I'm going to put that in to cook while we're doing the other stuff. And the rest of this I'm going to put away, because that made way more than I expected. And I can do that after the broadcast. Oops, I'll do that after the broadcast. But you understand just how much half a cauliflower made in terms of um, rice. Still got plenty in here. Probably another two, two, three cups in here. All right. Now then, the next thing that I heard about, let me just see what Beth has said. You have, can I repeat this, Beth? Just want to double check that before I start talking. Knowing that it will stay on. Okay. All right, Beth, hang on a second. Then let me just scroll back so that I can share it with people. All right, Beth had a whole series of tests done. She already has a thousand and one things that she has coping with, but she works harder than most people I know. Anyway, so Beth said, yes, I have six nodules in my lungs, which means I have COPD stage one. All right, my shoulder tendon is shredded. I need surgery. My brain scan showed two more lesions, but they're not active at the moment. Uh, do you want to just give me the correct way to describe why, what that is for you. All right. 
because people are going to go, what are lesions in the brain? What's that about? All right. She said her blood pressure is still super high, even with the blood pressure meds. I'm sorry to hear that. And the liver function is slightly better than last month, but still not good. All right. Mammogram was painful. Uh, I I want to tell you something, uh, Beth. Um, that's, you know, I, I've got to have a mammogram done, and I, I never look forward to that pain. All right. Um, so Beth is saying that she's got MS, and I, that's what I wanted to make sure it's okay for me to repeat. Uh, she's got MS, and that's what causes the lesions in her brain. And so this is somebody you probably want to feel sorry for, but don't. All right? Because if ever there was a person, when I say don't, obviously send thoughts and prayers. And I would like permission to put up thoughts and prayers for you, Beth. If that is okay, please give me the okay, and we'll do it uh, later on. Um, but what I want to have people understand is... Most of us, if we got that diagnosis coming through, would be curled up in bed um, and, and incapacitated. And Beth is at work. And she is busy complaining about the air conditioning. So you understand the difference. It's the same with Jody. All right. And so some people get these diagnoses and just get on with their life as best they can. And they do more than most of us put together, quite honestly. And by the way, talking about illness for a second before I go back to cooking, which is, and you know, I just heard that over a million people have now died from COVID in the U.S., and that's more than all the wars put together, all right? All the, the, the Americans that died in all the wars put together. And, you know, anybody who thinks that they, you know, this wasn't that serious, believe me, it was. Um, it was really serious. All right, now then, we've got half a cauliflower left. And what I was thinking is with some of it, we could make some, um, what do they call them? Like collie tots, all right? Like tater tots, but made from cauliflower. All right, so Beth's just given an explanation here. She said, when I have a flare-up with MS, it causes tumors in my brain. And when I finish with the flare-up, then it leaves forever a lesion, all right? Um, the more flare-ups, the more brain damage. Yeah, not fun. Not fun. All right, so let's do some, ta some tater tots, but we're going to do it with cauliflower. So little snacks. And I'm going to break this in half and just put... Now, how many of you make these? Because I've never made them before, but I presume that we're going to use florets, which is just a fancy word for smaller bits, not rice, but smaller. And normally I'd make cauliflower cheese. That would be what I would make out of it. But we're trying to eat healthily. And I'm going to leave them just like that. So we're going to make these a little tasty. So we will spritz them with some oil. And this is virgin olive oil. And how about some little bit of paprika? I'm thinking is good. Put some paprika in there. I've got some cardamom left over from when I was doing something. Cardamom is also good for us. Anything spicy is good for your metabolism, I think. Jodie will let us know. She's very good on these things. Okay, I'm going to put some that in. Uh, cumin would be nice. Yeah, I thought so. We'll throw some cumin in there. Obviously, more black pepper. And for those of you who like garlic and stuff, you know, just pack it all in there. And then, what else do we need? 
It'll probably do, won't it? Let's just toss that around. And you could also do this just as roasted, uh, as roasted cauliflower, right? So remember what it said, try not to boil cauliflower um, because you lose a lot of the good stuff. All right, Beth is saying, when I, and Lila, Sal, I bought a fancy espresso maker for Charles and I for your anniversary, right? And it was on the 10th. Yes, I actually did wish you a happy anniversary. Uh, it's so fun. I made a cup of puffs and milk, yes, and created Ninja Turtle on top, good. Um, now you understand why having a, a machine that makes froth in my life is, is not a luxury. It is, you know, yeah, send me the picture. I'd love to, and let me know if I can share it with other people. Uh, I want to tell you my, my machine that makes froth, froth, I can't, can't say that, um, is my most valued, uh, kitchen gadget after the coffee maker itself. So I totally get what you're talking about. Hang on a second. I just want to see if that's Jody trying to tell me something. Oh, it's a picture. Ah, can I share it with people? Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> okay, to share that. <laughs> well, first of all, here's my coffee. All right, but most of the foam has now gone down. But this is Beth's coffee. That looks like it's a face with an eye in it, but I'm not sure that's what you meant. It looks like, a, you know, um, a catfish, you know, you've got the catfish. All right, this is like a, a, an intelligence test, right? Rosha. Because <laughs> somebody else see the catfish? <laughs> the face of a catfish. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, so cheers. Um, the other thing I found out, Beth, is that if you like flavor, really important. Um, I've been doing some experiments and I decanted some of the, the syrup that I was using for flavor my coffee. And I do it like almost a 50-50 split now, you know, just water and the flavoring and the taste is just as good. Really strange, but so I have the um, have the cost of flavoring. All right, so this is good. I hope that will do. Just want to check on the pizza. All right, so it is cooking, but it needs a bit more. Ah, okay, so um, you've got these at work. I probably got them in a dollar store. 
you're right. All right. So I just put half in of the flavoring and fill it up with water, and that will last me a couple of weeks. Wow. All right. So that's my tip for the day. Now then, with the last bit of cauliflower, I also found out that it's a really good idea to make cauliflower salad rather than potato salad if you're trying to eat more healthily, right? So we're going to leave it raw, and I'm going to take half of it. About half. I'm going to take half of it and turn it into a cauliflower salad. So let's cut it up. And what I'm going to do use up some carrot that I've got left over. Put some carrot in. Some celery in. Put some using up the yellow pepper here. And what I will do is I will dry the seeds. Um, tomato on it. Let's put some red pepper in there as well. I've got something to show you that I know you guys are going to love. Hold on one second. I made a crepe and turned it into a container for my um, cauliflower salad. Don't you love it? Anybody want to know how I did it? All right, very easy. So, uh, first of all, I made a crepe. If you can imagine, this is a cooked crepe. You've seen me make crepes plenty of times before. Okay? Hang on. I, I need to be able to show you exactly what I did. So, this was the crepe. I made it a bit bigger you know, a full-size crepe. Then, once it was cooked, I folded it in half, and I folded it in half again, and then I've now got four layers, right? One, two, three, four. Can you see them? And all I did was take one layer, which now creates a pocket. And what I did was I stuck some paper towel in it, like that, all right? and put it in a bowl and put it in the fridge. Actually, I can show you, easier to show you with the thing itself. What did I do with it? Okay. Okay. So I put a paper, piece of paper towel in it like that to keep it up. 
and then I just put it in the fridge overnight. Now, I thought this was a really great idea for um, doing things if you're going to have uh, a barbecue or something. You could pre-make a salad and you know give everybody an individual one. And of course, the The crepe is crunchy now. <laughs> I make fun food. You know? <laughs> My kid loves Friday nights. All right, so I'm now going to get some um, mayo and ice cream inside. Yeah, we'll do that in a minute. And I'm going to use it for this. Okay, so put some mayo in. And we're going to toss that around. And what I thought I would do tonight is actually turn this into a crab salad. And it's Friday, try not to eat meat. And I've got some crab here. going to strain it. For those of you who like soups, you understand um, that keeping the juice from the crab would make a really nice bouillabaisse or something for those of you who like fish soup. I actually don't, so I'm going to just waste it. So there we've got crab and let's mix that up again. Most important part. I hope it tastes good. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. <laughs> mm. Mm. A little bit more paprika on top. Oh, no. Not that much. <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Dinner. So easy to do, right? Healthy, fun. So that's going, right? So I've got my yogurt dip 
Did somebody say they did want me to show you how to do the yoga cheese thing? So I'm not I'm not making you ask me yes. I'm just can't remember if somebody said yes. Normally that's somebody messaging me. Okay. Um all right, that, that was a serious message. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put this away. And I hope that you can see making this like this is portion control. All right. And that's what I wanted you to see. That's how I've lost the weight. Um, Sal needs a girl assistant from Kentucky. I can clean up. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're quite right. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to put the rest of this away into a couple of containers. And I'll have that during the week. So not only do I have it ready to eat this evening, but I've also got this left over to snack on during the week. Meal prepping, people. So here is the pizza. All right. Looks pretty good to me. What I'm going to do is let it cool. And then I'm warming it up, uh, adding a bit more cheese and warming it up before I eat it later in the week. So that looks really good. Be interesting to see how brie cheese tastes. And then I think I need to tidy up a bit before I go forward, people. <laughs> Now, if you, you I had to try and remember, why did I cook the rice? I wanted to make mashed potato out of it, right? Let me see what I've got here. <laughs> so Beth is saying, oh, and I'm pretty sure Sal will be laughing the whole time. I would be. I'd love to have a sous chef uh, in one of these programs, right? I'd just love to have you visit. I want to tell you something, Beth. When um, Manon came to visit, um, it, it was just the ma most magical time for me because I, I really already felt I knew her, which I seemed to, I was correct in that. And uh, we, we got on like a house on fire and she was just so delightful. I was so happy.
Now, how many of you were here when I was making cheese, not cheese, butter? I found a new trick, people. I now um, freeze them in ice cube trays, all right? So I can just pull out like a teaspoon of butter at a time. How many of you are going? Clever, Sam. Huh? So I'm going to put some butter in here because butter isn't bad for us, we found out. Mix that all up. That's good. So we're going to make mashed potatoes with cauliflower, butter, So we've pre-cooked the cauliflower. It's messy stuff, this cauliflower. And I thought we'd put some cream in a little bit. What do you think? Ah. I have arthritis in this finger, so I can't just pull it out the normal way. Might need a bit more, we'll find out the hard way. So I'm just going to blend that up. little bit of um, parsley from that I'm growing and now I have got a portion of cauliflower mash mashed cauliflower all right in butter and cream and again one meal this week I will warm this up maybe grill it a little bit on top and I think that'll be awesome hi Jonas good to see you have you got a birthday coming up honey So this, using the cream at the end of the week, it's a game changer for me, all right? I just make a little bit of butter. I probably make um, about this much butter a week, and some of it I'm using and some of it I'm freezing because I will give it away to people who come to visit. If anybody does. Which leaves us with this. I had a feeling that you were going to be turning 22. All right. Um, all right. So this I've kept aside. Why? Because this is, I'm going to have this with my dip this evening, remember? And I think I will have some. Red pepper, we'll use up the red pepper as well. So I'll get some red pepper sticks for my dip. Yep. 
Yeah. Let's make that easy. Yeah. Color, so I'll pick color. Uh, We've got some left over the carrot. That will help. Colors of the rainbow. Um, Jonas, I I don't remember well. <laughs> we have a database and your name's in it. <laughs> and I knew you were going to be 22. Even better, because when I put it in, I put the age that you were in in a certain year. Like last year, I put in that you were turning 21. And then you, I knew you'd be turning 22 this year. You're glad to be in it. Well, we're glad to have you in it. So Jody's comment about I make bread every day, that's not quite true. Once a week, I make dough. And then I package it in uh, quantities like this. And this amount will make me two, make me two pita breads, all right? So every other day I pull out one of these and I roll it out and make pita bread from it, all right? That's every day, give me this day my daily bread. It's a piece of pita bread stuffed with lettuce and cheese. Simple. And remember, I have still lost 11 pounds. Now, the reason I need to clean up is because I want to make ice cream. <laughs> oh, that would have been nice. Oh, I'll put it on the pizza. Hang on. Let's have it on the pizza. That's a good idea. There we go. So that will be going into the fridge. Get back in the fridge. This can go out of the way. I just want to turn the pots over. Hold on one second. See how dumb they are. <laughs> oh, and I could also have some cheese with that, right? This is my snack food for when I am um, binge watching tonight. So, hold your ears a moment, people. A word to the wise. Making rice out of cauliflower makes a mess. Oh, hang on a second. Um, <laughs> what is the oven looking appliance next to my stove? That's my air fryer. Took me a long time to get it right, but I got it eventually. And now it's like it cooks things so quickly. It's amazing. If you've got one or two people in the house, it's way cool. Uh, wonderful. Okay. So here is what I heard. 
I heard that you can make ice cream out of um, this stuff. So this is just a vanilla pudding. And here is what I would normally do, all right? Yeah, be jealous because it wasn't cheap. No, I, and I think some of you know I bought this incredible mold. Right? Great portion control, Sal. All right. <laughs> I'd like to do one cup versions of this, but I really like Eskimo bars. Do, do, does anybody not know what an Eskimo bar is? It's basically um, ice cream covered in <laughs> covered in chocolate, right? So, uh, if I had more time, I would melt the chocolate and then line these with the chocolate before I put the stuff in. But what I'm going to do is make them and then just make the chocolate and drizzle it over the top and I will post you a picture later maybe tomorrow all right so let's do this it says one and a half cups of sugar now you know I'm not doing that I'm making ice cream because it's your birthday, Jonas, of course. All right. So we all agree I'm I'm not putting the sugar in. I don't need the sugar. All right. But if you want to put sugar in now, could I put a mix? Hang on. I have a mix of brown sugar and stevia here. So just to keep them happy, I'll put some in. Not much. Just some. Then it says I'm going to need one package of this stuff. I don't know why I'm so excited about this. <laughs> okay, so let's take the top of that. Pack that in. It wasn't difficult, was it? And then we need, it says one quart of heavy whipping cream. I'm not going to put a quart in. Because we, yeah, I'll do a mix. So. It says to put in two cups of milk. Well, on, how much have we got in there at the moment? This is one cup, right? One cup. So we're going to put in one cup of milk. One cup of cream. And then, is it two cups of milk? Okay, I'm going to do it for another cup. It's an experiment, people. I've never done it before. And I'm using 2%. Obviously, my next experiment, I will try it with um, almond milk. See how that works. Okay. And then a little bit of... Uh, I've got some clear vanilla. Hi, Karen. Good to see you. Put some vanilla in there. And then we're going to mix it up. Now, if I hadn't used all my blending things, Probably would be a good idea to put this in the blender. Mm. <laughs> I 
I've got a feeling that I'm going to have more than I need. So I'm going to. You know it's going to expand a little when it cools, when it freezes, so don't overfill it. Actually, it's not bad. Okay, so that's going in the freezer. I don't want that. How many of you can see? That this is already dessert. Because <laughs> it's thickening up already and I'm going that'll be really tasty. All right, so this lot is going in the freezer. Oh, look at that. It's already pretty solid. Out of the freezer it's looking really good people already so it's going to go into the freezer like that And that will be so great tomorrow. Uh, what I will do tomorrow is I will take it out and I will put some chocolate over it, drizzle some chocolate over it, maybe a few nuts, and then I'll take a picture for you <laughs> if I don't eat it all up. That's amazing. So tonight for dinner, I'm going to enjoy It's too hot for that. So here we have some spicy snacks, finger food. And <laughs> um, how many of you knew I would start by tasting this before I, yeah, I don't care what you want me to taste. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's already solid. Well, nearly solid. All right. Wow. Frozen custard. That's what it tastes like, frozen custard. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, the better. Mmm, I thought that was fast as well. Look at that. It's just like not even falling off the spoon. 
Ask me how it tastes. And how many of you are going, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that before you've had your dinner, so Did any of you think, could you hear that tape playing in your mind? You can't have dessert until you've finished your dinner. How many of you thought that? Yes, Jody's saying, I'll be trying that with maybe the butterscotch. I've got some chocolate of it. A very, what I'm trying to think of, a very um, fun looking dessert if you've got kids or whatever, you know, and, and not a big cost. And what if, what if you have one of those logs like I made, all right, and, and just put that in a corner, you know, put some regular ice cream in and then stick one of those on top. Would you be a very popular person? You know what I mean? The waffle cone. I don't need to get one. You know what I'm talking about, right? And just put some regular ice cream in and then stick one of those frozen ones on top. I got a feeling that a lot of people would love you very much. But how bad is this for you? This says that I need my glasses. Hold on. One sixth of a package, about half a cup, is um, 100 calories. Well, how healthy is my dinner? Oh, wait a minute. There's a bit of my dinner missing. Okay. Um, how healthy is my dinner? end up with an accident not many calories there people all right this is cauliflower as a base not potato this is yogurt and dip so do you understand that a full cup of, des of dessert is just fine for me <laughs> because i'm gonna have it anyway it's friday all right so you look at it and go it's not what can't i have i'm learning to find these incredible ways of having wonderful stuff to eat. So, um, I've got fish, I've got crab, I've got vegetables, I've got yogurt. What's not to love? So I hope you enjoyed that. I did. Um, and I've got plenty of food in the fridge to snack on all week. Which one did you like best today? And by the way, you understand there are like so many different ways that you can cook cauliflower. What I want you to understand is just cooking it by steaming it and, yeah, and throwing some cheese over the top is definitely a, a great idea. But that's what I normally do. That's why I didn't want to do that today. <laughs> you know, I love cauliflower cheese. It's one of my favorites. Um, but, you know, what I wanted you to see is how versatile it can be if you are trying to lose weight, but also how far it goes. Remember, I've got mashed potato, I mean, mashed cauliflower, and I've got this much um, rice that I'm going to freezer, put in the freezer. Oh, you like the crepe? I did too. I had a feeling you guys would like that. Now, imagine that, you know, if you had a burger, all right, with it. And what I was thinking is, you know, this year I might make burgers. I might make my own crepes and put a burger in and, and the bits, you know, and then just have it like that. All right. The pizza was fun, wasn't it? Yes, I like the pizza as well. So... I've got plenty to eat during the week and not much room in my freezer. So, you know, if I don't eat it during the week, it's got to go. <laughs> I have to make room for the ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I make room for them. You all understand that. The ice went out of the freezer <laughs> so I could have the, actually, I put it in the big one. It's difficult to pick a favorite. How many of you know that, that I have fun doing these? You know, I have fun coming up with the ideas. 
and then researching what can I do and going, oh, that would be fun to do. And then seeing if it's possible to do within an hour and a half. And we've done enough food to sort of keep me in basics all week in an hour and a half. That is called food prepping. And a lot of it will go back into the freezer, but it's ready to eat. And I've got to eat it, really. I don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jody says your enthusiasm is contagious. Well, this kid is going to eat her dessert completely. I don't care what you heard in your head, because you see, I reckon at 75, I can do what the I like. <laughs> and if I want to have my dessert before my meal, I will. I've earned that right. I hope there aren't any children watching. This is dear Mama Sam saying, thank you for letting me enjoy doing these things. I hope that give you some ideas. Um, everybody, do you want me to show you one more time how to do the crepe thing? Just make a crepe, fold it in half, fold it in half again. You will then end up with four layers, one, Right, you'll end up with four layers like that. Put three layers together, and you will then end up with this little cone. And all I did was stick some paper towel in there, and just like that, with the paper towel in it, I put it in the fridge overnight. And when I got up this morning, it had hardened. So cute. Never tried it before in my life. I don't know what made me try it. Oh, I know. I always like watching the Korean street food type stuff. I don't know about you guys. And I thought, I remember seeing them do something like that and put ice cream in it, which I think Iz was talking about. And I went, yes, but what happens if I just keep it overnight? I'm glad I did the experiment. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, thank you for being here. It's such fun. Jonas, have a wonderful birthday coming up if I don't see you beforehand. Um, so Jody, thank you for being there. And the rest of you, thanks for the support. Beth, look after yourself, please. Uh, and all of you who are struggling, I admire your strength of character is what I have to say. This is Dear Mama Saw going off to eat her dinner. Bye-bye for now, people.